Well, good Sunday evening, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's had a great Sunday. Uh, the Combine is now in the books, and we have a lot of stuff that's going on here. Tomorrow is already Monday. Come Tuesday at 4 o'clock. If you have not been franchise tag, you are a free agent. Uh, and there's a lot of guys out there that right now teams are kind of holding their breath. Um, we have some interesting news. Apparently Derek Carr is looking to be that first ballot hall of famer by signing with the jets. It seems that he is leaning towards the jets and becoming a jet. Um, teams are kind of, kind of waiting to find out what Aaron Rodgers is going to do. Aaron Rodgers has left his bunker of solitude, uh, his thing of darkness, and being the drama queen that he is, hasn't made a decision yet. You know, even though he's teased us, like Jerry Jones does on a regular, teased us about <clears throat> making a decision after being in his fortress of solitude, is literally leaving the Green Bay Packers hanging. Um, I'm at the thought of, if I'm the Packers, I'm just kind of sick of this crap. And just look at it from the standpoint of saying, we just need to move on and start over. Uh, you just do. It's just, it's getting to be ridiculous how he is referring to Jordan Love as my replacement and not saying his name and not even letting you know if I'm going to be here or not going to be here and so on. Just move on. Derek Carr, who it seems to be that everybody believes is a great quarterback, regardless of his record regardless of the interceptions and the failures, even having all the pieces around him this past year. I still look at it and say, wow, I wish Dak Prescott had had the weapons that he had this year. I wish we had had that kind of firepower. Uh, Darren Waller and uh, Josh Jacobs, Devontae Adams, Hunter Renfro. I mean, that is four incredible playmakers to go with the quarterback and somehow he got benched, but be that as it may, there are two other teams that are interested in him beyond the Panthers, the Saints, and the Jets, apparently. Other news, it is expected or we're believing that it may be close for Daniel Jones to actually get a long-term deal. He was asking for $48 million, $48 million. Wow. Wow. It is believed that his deal will be a minimum of a hundred and sixty million four year deal, so at least forty million dollars. Then there's Lamar Jackson, and we have no idea what the Ravens are planning on doing, but franchise tag anyone? Franchise tag and trade? Could be. The Ravens, I don't understand them. But for our Cowboys, we're beginning to see at least an idea of the players that they value. And it looks like we're going to be losing um, two players on our defense that were instrumental. One being Leighton Vanderesh, Leighton Vanderesh. And allegedly the sides are very, very far apart. And if I'm Leighton Vanderesh and saying, look, I've been here five years. You've seen my importance this year when I was out, how we couldn't stop the run. And I played for two and a half million dollars last year. I gave you the discount to give you the benefit of the doubt. And now I need to make money because I'm only going to have so many years left. And I can't begrudge a guy for wanting to get paid for what they do. You don't know what the long-term ramifications are. And you only have a short window to get paid. You may love the Dallas Cowboys, but if the Cowboys aren't showing you the love back, well, then you got to look elsewhere. Also, Donovan Wilson, with over 100 tackles this past year, are in the box safety, a guy who is great at run support, and a guy who you look at and say, he is almost a linebacker. He's kind of like, you know, when you have that heavy nickel, he is the guy. And unfortunately, his value has shot up to the point where the Cowboys are going to look at this and say, it's too much. It's too much. Last year, we looked at it, and we were talking about not keeping our Pro Bowl punter because he was too expensive. We ended up letting go Cedric Wilson because he was deemed too expensive. But I dare say that we did at least bring back the punter. 
I really wish at this point that we had kept Cedric Wilson because I think Cedric Wilson would have been the second best receiver we had on the roster, especially since in Miami he ended up just sitting the bench. And now, apparently, the Cowboys are still interested in Odell Beckham Jr. And Jerry Jones has had contact indirectly with Odell via his mom at NFL Honors. Not with Odell, but with Odell's mother talking to her at NFL Honors. So that may be what the Joneses consider is a big move. And I'm sitting here looking at the replay of the combine, and I'm seeing Stephen Jones with the shit-eating grin up there. <sighs> Stephen Jones, Cowboy COO and director of player. Yeah. <sighs> so, here's the thing. I'm going to ask a real question because, again, we've heard Jerry Jones say a lot of things. You know, we want to keep Zeke Elliott. We want to uh, franchise tag or get a contract with Tony Pollard. When you look at keeping Zeke Elliott, just hypothetically, just, just bear with me here for a second. Keeping Zeke Elliott is an and or. If you keep Zeke Elliott, and that means somebody like Donovan Wilson and Leighton Vander Esch, you've got to let go. And see, that's what we're really talking about here. You have to understand, when you pay one guy, that means somebody else has got to take less. And I get it. We're talking about Dak Prescott. He's taking too much money. But in actual, only 19% of the cap last year, excuse me, 19 million of the cap, less than 10% of the cap was Dak Prescott's contract. And the $49 million that we see right now is not going to be the hit he takes. It'll be restructured or a extension will be put on it one way or the other. He'll probably be, again, about around $20, $22 million. They will get cap relief from him, in which case they'll be able to do some things if they want to. So would you rather, here's my question, would you rather keep Zeke Elliott or keep Donovan Wilson and Leighton Van Der Esch? Or, here's a different one. Would you rather keep Zeke Elliott and keep Donovan Wilson and sign, um, let's see, Bobby Wagner? Because that's what we're talking about. Would you rather keep Zeke Elliott have Bobby Wagner, or have Bobby Wagner and Donovan Wilson? I, I'm more of the cloth of the Cowboys would be better suited doing that than keeping Zeke. Draft another running back. Draft the young-legged guy. Crazy, but that's how you have to look at it. If you're keeping Zeke, that prevents you from getting another guy. And another way to look at it would be, would I be better off taking Tony Pollard letting him go and Zeke go, making Zeke a June 1st cut, keeping the $21 million and getting great offensive linemen and then dra you know, sign an offensive lineman, a, a true good offensive lineman, have some change left over for another guy and draft a running back. crazy idea well let me know what you think in the description uh, in, in the comments here and uh these are the thoughts and things that we have to think about because the franchise tag has to be done by tuesday at four o'clock that's a day and a half from now guys we'll see what happens all right hope you guys are having a great day and i will see you soon <laughs>